Welcome to another episode of Talk and Shop. I've got my friend, a local celebrity. Oh, that's, that's I would even wrong. say probably a national celebrity, but Peter Dunn, aka Pete the Planner. Or Peter Duncan, is that your new yeah, name? Yeah, Peter Duncan, if you misidentify me, I go with Peter Duncan. Uh, so Pete and I just had a real good lunch, kind of catching up, and I thought it'd be great to do another uh, video and talk about kind of the year end. So recapping what was great this year, maybe have some advice on things to think about as you round out the year, going into a new year from a financial standpoint, and then talk a little bit about uh, what's exciting coming up in the new year. So. Pete is the expert in this area. This is what he does all the time. So I will let him start the way with what are some end of the year checklist items that people should be thinking about when it comes to the personal finances. So I, I uh, all the content I build, I build for myself, which means I write it so that I do it. So this is my own personal checklist. Okay. <laughs> so okay. if you need to use this checklist yourself, feel free. I got to make sure I round out my HSA contribution. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually doing that on Friday. No one cares. I'm doing it, uh, running out. And so, cause for me, my HSA is one of my best financial tools. Mm -hmm. You know, you get the triple tax advantage. Um, I like to think of my HSA as my healthcare 401k because mm -hmm. I don't want to spend $300,000 out of pocket in retirement on healthcare. So I'm funding that now. So mm -hmm. I have a ton of money in my HSA and it's my favorite thing to do. Uh, I'm putting money, uh, we live in Indiana, of course. So uh, you want to get try to get five grand uh, contributions into a 529 plan in the state of Indiana to get the thousand dollar tax credit. So I do that. I put a little bit more into. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think what else. I mean, my 401k is done, been maxed out for a while. Um, other than that, really, my wife and I are just sort of setting goals for 2019. What charities we want to support. Um, that's a really important thing in our house because it just makes giving a lot more fun when mm -hmm. it's purposeful and it's not reactionary. Um, yeah, that's what we're working on. Okay. So not, this isn't something that is pertaining to me cause I'm young, but I'm, Wait, I, are, I'm not young, no, no, you're, but you're I'm like you. four years old. Okay. Than so you. us, so us, I have um, no hair <laughs> RMDs. If you are of the age or if you have an inherited IRA, yeah. RMDs are something you don't want to miss. Hefty penalties, 50% penalty if you don't get that out in time. So don't want to miss those. I do not um, miss those days, by the way, when I used to do that. Mm -hmm. but know. Luckily now the companies will calculate it for you. It's just making sure clients are done. It was a done. nightmare back in the day. Yeah. I don't have too many of them. Yeah. Um, and then I always like trying to get the IRA funded before the end of the year. You know, technically we don't have to. Yeah. But I think it's easier from a monthly savings if you can just get it knocked out in 12 months. January starts new. You don't have to go back and figure out how much you still owe. So. Well, I think even with the HSA now, you can wait until April 15th. It used to not be that way. I don't think. The, I'm now I'm giving potentially wrong advice. Google HSA <laughs> and when you can make contributions. Not I do it this year. I do I, it this year. I think it's easier to get it in by the end of the year. Both both cases. I like to start fresh on January 1st. I, I'm with you there. Yeah. Uh, what about as far as goal planning is going into the new year? What do you recommend people think about? Um, I'll give you my two cents. Yeah. I especially with younger clients as I'm building out a plan, I like to think of the, you know, Gary Vee, if you're a fan of Gary Vee, he talks about macro and micro. Mm -hmm. I view my job as the advisor of thinking on the macro level, looking big picture, long-term planning, whether it's college or retirement or whatever it might be. But I want my clients to think on the micro. Meaning, Absolutely. here's your recommendations for the next year. Do these, 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 these things, and then we'll revamp in 2020, and that, here's the next ones. And I know that these will compound. So. I like to encourage people to think more short term with their goals, knowing that those will compound for the longer term. But curious your take. Close. It's close, right? It's not, it's not too far. Here's how I think of this. Um, I like to take care of business and fund my goals as part of my income, right? So while as I, I'm not fully funded for retirement, at the pace of which I'm currently contributing, I will be fully funded for right. retirement. So I no longer consider that a goal. Mm -hmm. It is a goal taken care of, mm -hmm. right? Same with college. Not a goal of mine to fund any more for college than I typically do, already do, so that is no longer a goal. I only look at, at, at my goals for like 2019 of, uh, frankly, sometimes they're consumption goals. Mm -hmm. Like we need to buy another family car or our 20 year anniversary is coming up. Maybe we're, we go overseas for mm -hmm. a little bit, something like that. Or better yet, my business is really growing right now and I think uh, when you get up and you start having tens of employees, having a higher cash position as the business owner yourself mm -hmm. becomes even more important. So one of my goals for 2019 is to have a much larger cash position than mm -hmm. I currently have, which means I'm going to have to change some of my habits on a monthly basis to pull that off. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. What is your S&P 500 target for 2019? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> Just kidding. When I, I drop my licenses, I don't care anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally kidding. That would have been the obvious video we could have done today given the markets, but I thought it'd be You were the fun. only person saying anything. I've just been going, I don't know. 
Oh. Well, I, I think it's more important to focus on the things we can control on. So, yeah. um, 2018 was a good year for you. Yeah, man. Excited for 2019. What do you have coming up? So our primary business is called Your Money Line, which is a financial helpline and email service where people can connect with financial experts all over the country and they're professional problem solvers. They don't take the place of financial advisors. Mm -hmm. They're basically for the rest of humanity who doesn't have a financial mm -hmm. advisor. How much house can I afford? How much car can I afford? Um, hey, I have $5,000 with it. Should I put it towards college or retirement? These, these are sort of financial planning light mm -hmm. questions. So uh, we deliver uh, our services through employers. Um, and so that's going great. We're going to go a B to C, uh, extension of that probably in the third quarter we're testing it right now. So just the average person can call up and, and have a conversation with someone not trying to sell them something. And it's just answering the question and it's no more complex than that. Mm -hmm. So that's good. We're growing really fast and, uh, have a lot of great relationships. It's a, it's a sick platform. I've been able to see a little bit of a behind the scenes. It's pretty cool and it's needed. Um, you know, a lot of us advisors talk about our business models and we fight with each other about the best way, but at the end of the day, there's a segment of people who don't even get to go into those models Yeah. and your money line addresses those and it's CFPs that are helping them too, right? CFPs or AFCs, okay. both. And, and you know, you and I talked about it at lunch actually, and I wish you were there. It was delicious. <laughs> uh, we talked about it. It's like when I was a financial advisor, I didn't like managing money. Mm -hmm. I loved people's garbage. Mm -hmm. I love when people come to me and they just keep making the same behavioral mistake mm -hmm. over and over and over again. I love that. I love to fix that. So that's what our organization is. We do the garbage mm -hmm. so that someone like you can take uh, the other side of that garbage and just focus on your job. I think sometimes for financial advisors, you're forced into these triage situations and whether you want to do it or not, it's a little bit of a time suck. So. Mm -hmm. Um, that's why we do that. And, and, and when we do it in the workplace, the whole point is to drive participation and contribution levels on retirement plans. But when we go to the, the general public, it's to make better clients for financial advisors. Is the website up and running? Oh yeah. Yourmoneyline.com. All right. I will link to that in the show notes. Uh, but we got Pete's 2018 good. What he's excited for for 2019. Any closing end of the year thoughts for viewers out there thinking more on the consumer side, not the advisor yeah, side? Yeah, I, I, so my 2018 was a year of self-control for me, which makes it seem like I have some sort of dependency issue. I don't, <laughs> it just, here's, here's what I focus on right now when I talk to consumers. Mm -hmm. um, we all have made a good financial decision in isolation, right? You, you, you do things wrong and then finally you're like, I'm gonna do it right. But that was a really hard decision. Mm -hmm. But the next time you're faced with that exact same scenario, you still have to make the decision again. You still have to sacrifice and mm -hmm. say, okay, I'll do it the right way. I think once you stack those on top of each other enough times, sacrifice turns into self-control. Mm -hmm. And so when we try to get people to change their behavior, what we get them to understand is, yeah, the first few suck. It's sacrifice. That's mm -hmm. the point. It's why you're, you're like, oh, this is terrible. It is terrible. But at some point, I think magically, mystically, it's like six weeks. Okay. It cross, especially with, with reoccurring things, it crosses into, that's just the way I do it now. Mm -hmm. And that's powerful because I think if you set a personal standard for you and your household, it's self-control and you no longer feel like you're missing out mm -hmm. on things that you're saying no to. Did you read uh, James Clear's Atomic Habits? Uh, not yet. Your six weeks kind of ties into some of the he talked about, the forming habits and how long it takes. Yeah, right? I, 66 days is the latest sort of data I've read mm -hmm. on that. But I think for what we were dealing with this year, 60 weeks made sense. 21 days is a little short yeah. uh, in my opinion, but anyway. Brag, one last thing, brag on your workout uh, streak. 409 days in a row. November 7th of 2017, I decided to start working out, and so I've worked out for at least 30 minutes a day, every day since then. I also have a broken foot right now because I've worked out 409 days in a row. So all the people on Twitter are like, gonna take a break, boss. I was like, okay, okay, you're right. But it doesn't matter. And everybody knows how much I love fitness. I'm not even close to that, so. Well, I mean, you also are fit. Like, it's just like, I'm basically just like watching <laughs> women do yoga on YouTube. That's, that's not true. I'm very, but no, I mean like, it, it's, I switch it up. I'll do yoga or I'll get on the exercise bike or I'll r run, play basketball, whatever. Oh, basketball. You were a hooper. I bet a lot ball. of people didn't know that. Well, I mean, look at me. Uh, yeah, I played little ball. Little right. ball. Marion County, Pike, Pike High School. Yeah, a little... Yes. It's a good program. They don't let anybody play. So he's I think it's a great program. Mm -hmm. I think you, it's a little better than 
where you went. But. <laughs> I mean, just, I mean we, we want to point to state titles. We'll, we'll end it on that. So, uh, Pete, thanks for joining us. Oh, no, my pleasure. Everybody, check your money line. Follow this guy on Twitter and everything that he's doing. There's a lot of great content that comes from him, and it's all about educating you, the consumer. So, it, it's great. I know a lot of the stuff that sometimes we find on Twitter and that I highlight is more for the advisor and the investment professional. Pete's all about helping the people. Um, so thanks for stopping by. My pleasure. Tune in for the next episode. Uh, Merry Christmas, happy holidays if I don't do another one before uh, next week. And we'll see you in the next episode.